David has been involved in the education sector for many years, working with companies such as Person Education, Encyclopedia Britannica, and Instructure. In structure. Reading is difficult for dyslexics to master, while test taking often presents an almost impossible barrier to overcome. So, how then do we overcome this barrier? David will be sharing with us how to empower students with smart reader pens to do both in his talk, which is breaking down barriers, dyslexia, and accommodation. Let's put our hands together for our next speaker. Great. Well, thanks very much. This is the David and David show by the looks of things. <laughs> so it's great to be here in, uh, in Singapore. Um, I'm going to be talking just a little about um, some products that we've developed and to see how applicable they are. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a background uh, on things and then get into accommodations, particularly exam accommodations. And if we've got time, I've brought my speaker here. Um, I can sort of display you exactly what the, the reader pen does. But let's just kick off with uh, what we're doing as far as this afternoon is concerned. Here we go. So a little overview, we're just going to give you an introduction into the, the company before we get into um, some of the accommodation side of things for exams. So a little bit of background on scanning pens. We're actually a, um, a British company. Uh, we have a couple of offices uh, in England. Uh, I run the Australian operation, but we've also got um, offices in the United States, uh, in Canada, and we've just opened an office in Delhi, in India. The company itself was formed, uh, one of the founders of the company was, uh, or still is in actual fact, uh, his name is Jack Churchill, and he's the great-grandson of Sir Winston Churchill. Uh, many people are aware that uh, Winston Churchill also had dyslexia, as does Jack. And Jack attended university, and it was interesting, David mentioned in his address a few moments ago how stressed out he got at exam time, and that's exactly what happened with Jack, and found it very, very difficult to cope at exam time. And so he wanted to do something uh, to be able to help people with dyslexia and to be able to read independently. So he formed Scanning Pens and he formed an association with a company called C-Pen. And C-Pen is actually a Swedish company. So if you hear the name C-Pen or Reader Pen or Scanning Pen, it's all one and the same. Now I think most of you, or hopefully all of you, would have got a brochure inside your bag uh, today which talks about the Reader Pen. Um, that's also got my details on there too, so that uh, afterwards, uh, if you've got any questions or whatever, you can uh, just contact me at the email address that's there, or certainly uh, tap me on the shoulder over the next couple of days, because uh, well, tomorrow as well, I'll certainly be here. I just wanted to put this slide up here. Um, most of you, I believe, are teachers, so you already know how seeing the word and hearing the word um, greatly assists learning and comprehension. In fact, up on the top right there, it talks about seeing and hearing the word together increases comprehension by 76%. And the fact that combining print and audio together increases recall by 40% over print alone. So not only is the reader pen um, good for uh, the dyslexic population, but also for general learning and reading. And that's something that we can talk about a few, a few, in a few moments' time. Now, also as David mentioned, exams are not necessarily all about reading. Exams are meant to be about finding out what you know or what you don't know. But the thing that is for sure is that huge numbers of people struggle at exam time. Uh, we know that 10% of the population is dyslexic, that's a fact. Uh, and in almost every country in the world, you'll get that same kind of statistic. And that includes obviously people with a, a very, very moderate or low area of uh, dyslexia through to the more severe. So it then follows that at least 10% of students are going to have very high amounts of anxiety at exam time. 
Um, and in addition to the people that have been diagnosed with dyslexia, there's another 5 or 10% of the student uh, population that either have undiagnosed difficulties or have other issues. You know, perhaps it could be something like visual impairment. There's a whole host of things. So you've got a whole bunch of students that really struggle at exam time. And if you can't read the question, you can't answer it. And we've probably heard, all heard of stories of people that, or students going into an exam room for a three-hour exam, and they spend most of that time trying to read the question. So they don't have time to answer the question. There are workarounds in that, and we're going to be talking about that in a, a few moments' time. But remembering, of course, that a student if it's not an English exam, they are there to be tested on other things, not their reading ability. So we need to make it easier for struggling students to take exams and to try and relieve some of the stress that goes with examination time. Now, exam accommodations, I've just listed up here, and I'm sure you know what they're all about. An exam accommodation refers to any approved accommodations which relates to the way you take an exam. This includes, but is not limited to, extending time, a testing location with reduced distractions, a scribe, and the use of assisted technology. So, we're going to be talking about some exam boards in just a moment, a few moments' time. So, what have been put in place for exams? So, here's a couple of things. Firstly, the human reader that will sit beside the student and read the exam question to them. Or the computer. We, these modern, in this modern technological days, we have a computer and we can have a computer room and we can make sure that we successfully put a student beside the computer and they can do the exam. But that creates a number of issues for both the school and the student. For the school, there's a few questions that have to be asked if you're going to have a reader. Firstly, do we have enough rooms to accommodate the readers that are necessarily going to be there to help the students that do have reading difficulties? Do we have enough readers? You need one reader per person, or you've got to, if you're sharing a, a reader amongst a whole bunch of students, then those students might have to wait uh, until they get their, their turn to ask some questions. Many schools, it's a volunteer scenario, um, but in many others, and particularly universities or polytechnics, it's, uh, the schools have to pay to have a reader. So how much is this all going to cost? And what's the opportunity cost if you've got a whole bunch of teachers at exam time just being there for readers when they, they're not there with their class? So there's an opportunity cost as well. These are some of the questions that a school asks with regards to readers. When it comes to the computer side of things, another bunch of questions come, to come up. Is the format of the exam paper compatible? Do we have enough computers? Do we have computers that people understand? And I was talking to a gentleman at lunchtime who said that he'd been talking to the um, Singapore Examination Board about his son uh, to be able to use a computer. Uh, his first exam, he was allowed to use a computer. He was familiar with Apple, and of course he was given a, a Microsoft product. So there's familiar, familiarity as well. But besides questions that the, that the school asks, there's a whole bunch of anxieties for the students themselves. Besides the whole fact that they might have to be sitting next to somebody, and in some cases of, you know, schools put fellow students in as readers. And that also makes it very, very difficult for a student to be able to cope at exam time. So they've got questions of their own. Who is this person sitting next to me? And how many times can I ask them to repeat the question? And I've heard of stories of um, students that, uh, dyslexic students, that need the exam question read over and over again but after four or five times, they don't want to ask the reader any more because they don't want to feel or to be considered an idiot. And they feel very self-conscious. So again, you've got a student who might have a reader, um, but still it's not working for them, and they feel very, very stressed that there's a person sitting next to them. And then the same also on the computer side. Um, they're in a separate room. Um, 
they might be familiar, they may not be familiar with the computer. So, what we have done is we've developed a, a product which we have imagined our marketing department spent many, many hours trying to come up with a name for this product and we imagine that we called it an exam reader for, uh, for obvious reasons. So what this is, is a, uh, a reader pen, a smart pen, which we have um, coloured orange. This is it here. Um, and if anyone that uh, popped in at lunchtime at the, uh, uh, the exhibition area, we, uh, I, I showed it to uh, many teachers. Uh, more than happy to, to uh, show it off again. But that is the exam reader, and um, the exam reader is used all over the world for people sitting exams. Now, many people ask, what's the difference between the exam reader and our normal reader pen, um, which uh, is another product, obviously, that we've developed. Now, I know that you won't be able to read all of this, but the reader pen, which is white, contains a text reader which converts text to speech and reads the words out loud. But it also contains four other functions. Uh, there's the dictionary functions. In fact, there's four dictionaries built into the, um, to the reader pen. There's storage on the pen where you can save text to the pen itself. There's also a voice recorder. And there's lots of settings down the bottom here where you can speed it up and slow it down so you get the pace that's right for the student. Plus, you can change the accent. There is left hand, right hand settings or whatever. Now, not surprisingly, exam boards would not be that keen for a student to take that pen into an exam, particularly if it was their own pen. You could load that pen up with all the answers and you'd be good to go. You would get an A plus in your exam. So the, the exam pen doesn't have the dictionaries. It doesn't have the data storage and it doesn't have the voice recorder. So all this does is read to the student. And it gives the student the opportunity to be able to say, well, I'd like to have a human reader or I'd like to use a computer or I'd like to use an exam reader. And We've actually just released the exam reader with, we've got 12 languages on it now, including Chinese. Uh, so it's uh, an exciting sort of time for us. So schools all over the world use the, the exam reader. Uh, that figure there that talks about the UK, 30,000 pens are in use in the UK. I work in the Australian market and hundreds of schools in the uh, Australian market use the pens. We are trying to get the pen approved by the Singapore the SEAB here in Singapore. It's a little harder than we thought, but uh, we're working on it. And what I'd perhaps like to do is, um, uh, in fact, it's probably, how am I going for time? Ten minutes, okay, good. So what I'd like to be able to do now is just perhaps show you how it works. I've got a speaker here. There's a, most students will use um, headphones so that um, they can uh, use the reader pen, depending uh, on, the, on the school's rules. Um, they could use the exam reader um, in an exam hall with their fellow students. So they can sit there and just listen to the words be read out. Um, or alternatively, if they've been granted extra time, um, and that's a factor as well, um, then they can use the pen in the other room, if you like, with, uh, with other students. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm just going to turn this up so that you can all get blasted out. Um, and just, ex just to show you how the pen works, it's... Super simple, I won't go through the whole procedure, but it's as simple as scanning the pen over a line of text or a word. But bearing in mind, if someone's dyslexic, it's not every word on every line that's a problem. It's a word here, it's a word there. It could be multiple words. Um, so they don't necessarily have to read everything uh, with the pen because uh, they'll be able to read a fair degree of the exam paper on their own, but when they get stuck, they need somebody or something 
to help them read the questions. And all you do is you scan whatever you're going to scan. And early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Now, I've got that one on my Indian setting. I was talking to the people from Madras at lunchtime, and um, I just wanted to show them this new setting that we had with regards to the, uh, the uh, Indian language. And you'll be pleased to know it passed the test. They thought it sounded very realistic, which is really good. We have a whole bunch of different uh, accents here on the pen. Um, so I'm just going to flick it over to the... Um, English accent, which you'll probably be all familiar with. I know Dave and Angela will be. So, um, and I'll just scan another line of text. And uh, you became full some of the people all of the time, and all of the people some of the time. So I can do that all day and uh, just scan words or sentences or, or whatever. But the the whole point of the the pen is to allow a student to read independently at their own pace, so that they will not get stressed out at exam time. Bearing in mind these people all have to leave and go into the workforce, and dyslexia is a lifelong, um, uh, lifelong issue that they're going to have to deal with. It doesn't sort of end when school finishes. So even going to a restaurant to read the menu is an issue. Reading a newspaper is a bit of a problem. So these are the sorts of tools that can equip people for the future. And schools shouldn't, you know, schools have many students who struggle with reading at exam time, and many just can't cope. So these are just an option that uh, you hopefully will have in the future if the Singapore exam board approves the pen. We have dozens and dozens of exam boards around the world that have already evaluated the pen and approved it. David in his talk mentioned City and Guild, wasn't it? One of many uh, institutions that have uh, approved the use of the pen. Um, and in the UK, the JCQ, which is the Joint Council for Qualifications, which includes, um, I can tell you in just a few seconds, which includes City and Guilds, it includes Pearson, AQA, uh, and a whole bunch of others, but also uh, Cambridge International, um, IB International, uh, Baccalaureate, uh, the Scottish exam boards. In Australia, every single state exam boards has approved the use of the pen. Um, South Africa, uh, the US, uh, it, it sort of goes on. So we're sort of hoping, we're sort of launching the pen here in Singapore this year, and we're sort of hoping that the Singapore exam board will approve it for use. Of course, it's up to the student and it's up to the school to decide if they'd like to use it, but it is just an option that can be used from here on in. So, finally, just to recognise that exam time is a very stressful time for many students, and to be able to use assistive technology is something which uh, we believe is their right to be able to do. The exam reader is just one option, and I've talked about a couple of the other options that exist there with regards to human readers, um, and there will be more options that will come out over the years. That is absolutely for certain. Now, the pen is not for everyone. You can have two students with dyslexia, one student will say, this is fantastic, I can use the pen and I can read independently. Um, another student might say, no, I couldn't work it, it was too complicated, I couldn't understand it. And that's fine. It is just an option and then you look at whatever plan B is. But we certainly believe that um, using some assistive technology and more assistive technology will come out every year and give you as teachers more options to use not just at exam time, but also during the year in the class. And the speaker earlier on that talked about all of the Google apps, I thought was amazing and some of the things that exist. So it's great that you are aware of some of these different options that do exist. Um, and if anybody has got any questions, please feel free to grab me later or at any time during the conference. Um, I've got a couple of pens 
that uh, we have as trial, is, uh, which we'd be more than happy to lend out um, and uh, make those available and you can evaluate them for yourself. But thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. <laughs>